from a young man that's in Saudi Arabia and he told me how that God made a way for him to get a chance to preach over there. He said it was, they would be arrested if they had anything to do with the people that have been contracted to supply them with food. And he said the only way I could get there was they would hide me in the pots and pans uh, uh, to get me out of the camp and get me over there. And he's just started with this work uh, uh, and he said already had three baptized and and couples got the Holy Ghost. He said they were people that had never heard this glorious gospel before. I thank God for people around the world that are doing their part. Hallelujah. 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 A deep desire and the Lord impressed me and he has to talk to me real strong before I'll <laughs> call <laughs> and say something but uh, he didn't let me sleep at all all night long and, uh, and finally about daylight I said Lord I'll do it if you just let me sleep for about an hour <laughs> but I didn't even get that hour sleep something else happened <laughs> but I'm, I'm still uh, trying to obey the Lord that's the only thing we can do is obey him and I believe in this day he wants to talk to us more than he ever has before if we would only be listening. The message I am commissioned to bring to you tonight, commissioned by the Lord, is the threefold cord of blessing. Threefold cord of blessing. Now, if you've listened to a tape on this, well, tapes don't intimidate me at all. <laughs> You'll hear it in person tonight. Uh, I don't want you to read from your Bible. I want you to have both hands free. But I'm going to read, and I would like for you to repeat after me the first five verses of Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who redeemeth thy life. Who crowneth me with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who crowneth me with loving kindness and tender mercies? Would you please just put both hands on your head? I want you to remember and always remember you're wearing a crown. God has crowned you with his loving kindness and his tender mercies. And it's, that crown is there every day. No matter what your circumstance is, that crown is there. Loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Before you sit down, I want to read just one more verse. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I read that part for me and a few others around here that need it. God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> Blessing is something that's been around for a long, long time. The two sons of Adam and Eve that was offering offerings was in hopes of receiving a blessing. And this Old Testament is full of blessing. And I never thought that I would ever preach a message on blessing. And uh, it's taken the Lord quite a while to get me to this point. But the threefold chord is, number one, the first chord is bless the Lord. Now, this is not something that Pentecostals do as much as they should. We should bless the Lord. One man... Uh, kind of faced me with this one. He said, how can I bless the Lord? I'm a worm of the dust. I said, I don't know how we can bless him, but he likes it. 
he wants us to bless him. So number one, bless the Lord. It is a beautiful form of praise. And though I'm not worthy to even say his name, I can bless him according to his word. David was a man who made a lot of mistakes, but there's two things he knew how to do. He knew how to repent and he knew how to worship. And you'll read the Psalms over and over. He blesses the Lord and you should bless the Lord. That's the first chord and the threefold chord of blessing. I'm going quickly to the second chord. That's bless others. Now, I used to read about these old patriarchs blessing their children, and I just felt a little bit envious. I thought that would have been so nice, you know, if we had this custom or this privilege. And uh, then I found a book uh, written by two Christian psychologists, and they said we should have been blessing our children all along. And uh, so uh, my husband was in Africa when I read the book, but I got so stirred up. My children all married and gone, but I called them on the phone and blessed them. Uh, uh, but then as we get to them uh, after that, we, we blessed them together. But that blessing made a tremendous difference in two of them's life, and every one of them has mentioned it several times. It touched something. You see, uh, there, there, there's something more that we can do for our family besides just pray for them and tell them what's right and what's wrong. We should bless them. If you still have young children at home, you should bless them. Uh, and if they're grown and married like mine, you should bless them. And we went in one of our children's homes and uh, there was a little bit of problem, so we just called those three grandsons in and set them down and blessed them. Uh, and it surely did change things around there. Uh, uh, blessing others, I'm going to start with the family because this is something that God always meant for us to do. This, I don't have time to read all of the scriptures about blessing. It would be good if you made a study of it. My study of it has blessed me so tremendously but blessing others is a very important thing and then I'm going to quickly turn now over to the New Testament Jesus in our grill message uh, he started off by blessed nine different kinds of people he said are blessed uh, the hungry they that hunger and thirst after righteousness the peacemakers he called them blessed. But I want to read the 44th verse of this chapter, probably one of the least obeyed verses in this chapter. Verse 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now I'm going to turn over now to Romans chapter 12. There's a lot of sermons in that 12th chapter of Romans. I'm just going to read one verse there. That's verse 14. It says, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And Brother Freeman made an in-depth study of this verse, and he said, now this curse, I think there would be few people here that would take the name of the Lord in vain and swear, but he said it also means condemn, find fault, and criticize. And he said, bless and do not curse. And that also means do not find fault, do not criticize, do not judge and condemn. Uh, Paul is repeating what the Lord said. Well, on this blessing others, I said that the Lord had taken him a long time to get me, uh, help me to understand this message. I'm a slow learner maybe, but I want to tell you something that happened uh, more than 50 years ago. I was visiting my mother in Raymondville, Texas, and I looked out at the crowd. But that, at that time, I'd been preaching about a year, and I'd never preached to more than 35 people. And 250 people sitting out there just scared me half to death, I felt like. And I thought, I sure am glad I'm not the preacher, but my mother has this, had this convenient heart problem. And uh, all of a sudden, she grabbed her chest, and she said, Sis, You'll have to preach. I've got a spell coming on. 
Well, it scared me so bad that I grabbed my baby, ran next door, and I fell down on my knees, but I wasn't praying. I was crying and saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot. I haven't had time to read. I haven't had time to pray. I haven't had time to hunt a message. I just can't do it. And my 18-month-old baby come up behind me. She began to pat me on the back. And she said, oh, God, best mommy. Oh, God, best mommy. Well, God blessed mommy enough to help her to realize that she was in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. And I grabbed her and I run back to church just in time to be introduced as a speaker. And I was just on my way to the pulpit when I looked up and saw a man who was an outstanding businessman in that town. And he was uh, well known for his uh, ability to maneuver good business deals in his favor. His wife was a member of the church and he fought her continually. She didn't know he was there. She's sitting on the second seat from the front. But I saw Billy Wilkerson walk in and he was so sarcastic and so such a superior ugly kind of a spirit about him and he had said he's going to get his wife out of that church it was the last thing he ever did and here he walked in and his presence there just completely wiped me out I guess that's what God needed was for me to be wiped out because I don't know what I did I just walked up there and opened the Bible and wherever it fell open I started speaking uh, and I, I don't know what I told him uh, but uh, it had to be God because it wasn't me uh, I was past thinking or understanding myself but at the close of that message Billy Wilkerson walked down the altar and came and repented of his sins got the Holy Ghost we baptized him in Jesus name that day and he preached the gospel until he died but all the years I've been thinking about that I've mentioned this before in a sermon but I didn't really think about it as like I did later when God brought it to my mind what does a baby know about God and what does she know about blessing and I tried to understand this and I couldn't well then, the Lord had another chapter for me. Many years later, we were over in Africa, and there was this dear old preacher. He had been a Trinity preacher. Well, I guess I'll just take time to tell you how we got him. Uh, we had only been in Africa just a few months and my three youngest children were just two years apart and they specialized in getting everything that come along. You know, mumps, and if I think, is there three kinds of measles or four kinds, whatever there is, they had a turn at all of it. And so all I was doing in Africa was taking care of sick kids. And it was very frustrating. I said to my husband, I was doing more for God in Louisiana than I'm doing here. Over there, there was somebody could help me with the kids, but over here, there's no one. And he, somebody come by to pick him up and take him to a service, and I, I was left there again with the sick kids, but my oldest daughter was a very understanding nine-year-old, and she said, Mother, I'll take care of the sick babies tonight. I said, down the street, there's a little church. It says, Full Gospel Church outside. It says it in two languages, and she said, that must be some kind of Pentecost. She said, why don't you just walk down there and you can be in church? Uh, maybe they don't preach the truth, but you can at least be in church. And uh, by that time, I, I'd have settled for anything <laughs> to got in church. And so I walked down there and sat down in the back seat. It was nice. They sang a song or two that I understood in English, but most of their song and singing was in Afrikaans. And there were some testimonies, but two ladies testified in English. I enjoyed that. The sermon I didn't hear much of because I didn't know the language at that time. And uh, the preacher was preaching. I was just going to go, and then I thought, no, he's going in the baptistry. So I stayed there, and I'm sitting there just watching. I thought, I'm going to see how he baptizes. And I heard him say, Ek dupio in die naam van die vader en die sien en die heilige geest. And I knew that wasn't Jesus. And I didn't plan, because I'd already found out Jesus was Jesus. And I didn't plan to do anything, but the Spirit of God took hold of me. And I shouted with a loud voice, Oh God, teach this man the right way to baptize. <laughs> and he heard it, and so did everybody else. They all understood English, they just didn't like it as well as they liked the other language. But I never got so many looks. I decided I better go see about my sick babies. Uh, and I hurried out. Uh, and, and I'm practically running down the street. But I heard somebody running behind me saying, Sister, wait. Sister, wait. So I waited. He said, uh, My pastor wants to come and see you tomorrow night. Would you please give us your address? So I gave him the address. I thought, well, at least Brother Finn will be home when he comes. 
And uh, so Brother Freeman began to teach him from the word. And it came to that certain point one night that he said, I wish you people had stayed in Louisiana. What did you come over to Africa for to tear up my world? My husband said, Brother, we haven't showed you anything but the word of God. He said, that's the problem. And he said, uh, I'm two years away from retirement. They were going to give me a nice little brick house in the midst of an acre of land and would finish paying my car and I'd have a pension for the rest of my life. And here you come and you've got me so upset I don't know what to do. And he just got up and walked out. And a week or so later, we got a message to come and see him and tell him goodbye. He's going away to another country. And we went. We got there, and it was very strained. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. But we did say, we're sorry to see you leave. And he said, I've given up the church. I've got to get my mind straightened out. I'm so confused, and I'm so troubled, and I'm so upset. And we said goodbye. And it's a custom there that people stand on the porch and wave you off. You know, it's kind of nice really uh, but that's the way they are and so we I got to the gate and something just turned me around and I walked back we already said goodbye but I walked back and I shook my finger at up at him he's standing up and I'm looking up at him I said brother Devet, if God has shown you light and you refuse to walk in the light my brother you will walk in darkness I turned around and left eight months later he came back from Rhodesia where he had gone and he come up to me and he said, you. And he said it in a very menacing tone. Uh, and I'd have been scared, but I, I looked at his eyes and I saw a little twinkle there. He said, uh, I knew how to operate big machinery. And my son was doing some road building up there. And I'm up in that big uh, machine working. And here you come. And stand right there by me. And you're saying, Brother that if God has shown you light and you refuse to walk in the light, you walk in darkness. And then I'd come down and I'd go home to eat a nice meal. And there you stand by the back of my chair saying, Brother Matt, if God shows you light. He said, you didn't even respect my bedroom. I'd go to sleep at night and you come stand right by my bed. And you say, Brother Matt, if God has shown you light and you refuse to walk in the light, my brother, you'll walk in darkness. But he was baptized in Jesus' name. He never did baptize anybody else uh, in the titles. And uh, he became a powerhouse for the Lord. Uh, he was much older than Brother Freeman and I. Just a few years later, we buried both he and his beautiful wife. But before that happened, they had established a soul-saving station that is today a tremendous church. I got to preach there not too long ago. Uh, and it was beautiful to see what God had done with that work that he started in a storefront many years before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I had to kind of tell you the way he was to help you to understand what I want to say next. He supported himself by buying old cars, old vehicles, and repairing them and selling them to pay apartment rent and buy gas and groceries and hall rent. And one day he knocked on our door and the tears were just pouring down his face. Brother Freeman said, Brother DeVette, what is wrong? What is wrong? Uh, tell us about it. He said, let me come in. I will tell you all about it. He said, there's nothing wrong. Something's coming right that should have come right a long time ago. He said, let me tell you what happened to me. He said, I got that old pickup. I think I told you about it, Brother Freeman. And I need one little tiny part. And I've been to all the junkyards around Johannesburg and Pretoria. And I cannot find that one little part that I need. And I heard about a junkyard way out in the country. So I was on my way out there and on the way I came along by this biggest Mercedes that they make and the man that owned it evidently was walking up and down the road cursing and whoever drove his car and didn't put gas in because he'd run out of gas I walked up and said don't use that kind of language please just wait a minute and so he said I just quickly got a little container I had and siphoned some gas out of my pick up and put it in his car and he wanted to pay me and I said no 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 I want something at the end of the road I don't want it all now and he said uh, uh, the man looked at him and said if I were a religious person I would bless you and he said brother Freeman I didn't answer he began to weep again he said I didn't answer the Holy Ghost answered 
And I said, you don't have to be a religious person. You can bless me with the force of your human personality. You can say, I bless you and say it with a meaning and put something into it and I will be blessed. And then you can add to that, you can say, I bless you in the name of Jesus, and I will be doubly blessed. Man took off his big hat, folded his arms on his chest. He didn't know exactly how to do this. Uh, uh, and there's those three expensive cigars in his pocket. And he said to our preacher, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. He got to, it, it felt good to him, so he said it several times. Then he said, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. He, he got real excited, <laughs> just blessing him. He said, then Brother DeVette, as easy whipped, he said, but Brother Freeman, I have been blessed ever since that man blessed me. He said, you know, it's, it's common for us Pentecostal people. We say, God bless you. But we don't put anything into it. We don't put anything of ourselves. And it's, it's become, we might as well say, nice day, isn't it? But we, that man put something into it and I was blessed. He said, I went on to that junkyard and just as though I was guided, I walked back in the back corner and that grass over there grows four or five feet tall. He said, I pulled aside the high glass and there was the very kind of a pickup that I was working on and there was a part I needed. It was just like it was saying, here, here I am. Uh, and I got it and I come back to the man. He said, there's been a dozen people here looking for that. Where did you find it? He said, well, you found it so you can have it. <laughs> and he said, they bought that pickup before I got finished with it uh, and, I, and paid me more than I expected to get for it and I found another one to buy cheaper than I thought I could get it. He said, I have been blessed everything I put my hand to. He said, Brother Freeman, and here he sobbed he said if a sinner who was swearing a few minutes ago with a pocket full of cigars could bless me a Pentecostal preacher and I am blessed why are we not blessing this world that God has put us in he said surely God means for us to bless and we're doing everything else but from that day, Brother Freeman and I started blessing. Every time we walk into a home, I always wait for it. My husband will say, God bless this home. He always puts something into it. He always does this. He's done it at your house, Brother Kilgore, everywhere. And we began to live this, and it has blessed us tremendously. But I never thought about preaching it. But God began to deal with me about a year ago and he got me so stirred up and he began to show me some things in this book. Now, I read the Bible completely through every year and have, I've done so since long before we got a bread program because I felt my need of that discipline. And, uh, you know, but you can read it through every year and there'll still be so many treasures there that you did not find. And when I found this passage in 1 Peter, the third chapter, verses 8 and 9, let me read it to you. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. In other words, don't give back what you receive. If they ball you out, chew you up, falsely accuse you, that's evil and railing, but contrariwise blessing. That word rendering means to return. You return blessing. If someone talks ugly to you, you bless them. And this is what shocked me. I didn't know it was in here. Knowing that ye are there unto called. We have been called to bless. And I didn't realize this. I didn't know this. And there's a very good reason. It goes on to say that you should inherit a blessing. And now I want to turn back to just a few pages to James chapter 3 uh, and read to you just a little bit about the most dangerous part of your body. It doesn't have a bone in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, verse 5. Uh, it says ships and horses and everything else is controlled, but uh, 
Uh, the, the second verse says, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. But let me read you verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, so that it, is defi it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame, only the Holy Ghost can tame your tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Now listen to this. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. We need just blessings coming out of our mouths. And I want you to know, putting this into practice has been so exciting and so beautiful. I'm giving you tonight a weapon, <laughs> a something that you can use with difficult situations. Now, uh, I believe in blessing everybody. I believe in blessing the good people. I've been called to bless, and so have you. Uh, but uh, it especially works with, uh, you know, bad situations, uncomfortable situations. We flew into Zambia. Uh, it was late already, an hour and a half late because the plane was late for the conference and the people are waiting for us. And here's the missionary and the national superintendent uh, there and, and uh, Brother Freeman. And we walk up to this lady. We've got to submit our passport and it's got to have a they call it a chop in it uh, they got to stamp it with that stamp uh, in order to get in that country and she said I don't have to stamp your passport you've been mistreating our country you haven't treated us like you should we just gave them four billion dollars so we didn't treat them good and she's ranting and she's raving and carrying on uh, and I just stepped off a little way I thought I'm not there. there. The men can take care of this. I just got, I didn't get out of sight. I knew that would be dangerous, but I got far enough away that she couldn't really hear everything I was saying. Uh, but, well, she was yelling so much, so she probably she couldn't hurt if I'd been right by her. But anyway, I got over there and I said, thank you, Jesus, for this lady and her bad disposition. Uh, I thank you, Lord, because she's in such a bad mood today and she doesn't want to help us. And now, Lord, I want to bless her. I bless her with everything that's in me. I bless her. Uh, and I bless her with everything that's in the name of Jesus. Bless her with a good disposition. Maybe her husband slapped her before she came to work this morning. Maybe her breakfast soured on her stomach. Uh, maybe uh, her whole world is falling apart and she's taking it out on us. But you bless her with a faith in you and bless her with salvation and bless her with a better disposition and bless her to stamp those passports too. I got real happy walking up and down blessing her and thanking God. And one of her subordinates, a young man, come over and he apologized for the way she was acting. And I said, oh, it's all right. She's going to let us in the country. He said, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, so pretty soon she looked at me and she said, you come here. And she's got this awful look on her face. So I walked over there and I'm smiling all the way. Now, you, the, the beautiful part about this is that you don't have to do it out loud. You can do it in your heart and it still works. Just to, you know, sometimes it might be like waving a red flag. If you did it, it might just make folks madder. Uh, but you can bless them. And let me tell you what, it calms them down. Uh, I have got so many testimonies of people that have tried this and it absolutely works. Well, I walked up to her with a smile on my face and blessing her inside my mind just as hard as I can. And she evidently had a lot to say because uh, her mouth was really going, it was just twisted all kind of ways, but she couldn't get a sound out. <laughs> and finally, the only thing the Lord let her soul was, say was, let me have that passport. So I laid my passport over there right quick and she stamped it. Brother Freeman stuck his up there and she stamped it. And we were on our way to the conference and blessing had won a game. Time after time, we have gone to authorities who said, no, you cannot put up a tent here and we just bless them <laughs> and they don't know what happens <laughs> just uh, just you know uh, one, and one man one day he was giving us permission to do something that he said is even against their rules uh, but he said I don't know why I'm doing this <laughs> and we knew why we were blessing him for everything we were worth <laughs> uh, I, I got on a plane to fly from SeaTac uh, Seattle to Shreve, uh, to, uh, to Dallas really on my way to Shreveport and home and I hadn't had much sleep that week and I 
can sleep on planes. The Lord has blessed me. I, after I prayed for it and asked for it, that I can sleep on planes. And I had my thumb on that seat release button and I'm going to go to sleep. But I reckon well, there's this little three-year-old sitting right by me. She kicked me. She poked me with her sharp little knees and her sharp little elbows. And, uh, and she kept trying to pour her milk in my lap. Her mother grabbed it and I grabbed it a time or two. And I thought, well, no sleep. And then I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm forgetting something. So I looked down at her, smiled. And I said to her mother, I smiled at her. I said, she's a beautiful child. <laughs> and, but I'm blessing her. <laughs> I bless this little darling. <laughs> I bless her with everything that's in me. I bless her in the name name of Jesus and all of a sudden that little baby's eyes began to close and her mother said to her husband daddy look she's going to sleep and she never sleeps this time of the day uh, and she grabbed the milk one more time just before I got it uh, in my lap and uh, I mean she was gone and I had a nice sleep blessing had won again time and time and time and time again I have got to share this with you there are people that I have tried to witness to and they were so ugly and acted so ugly and I would just bless them and their whole attitude would change and they don't know why they changed uh, I, I preached this at uh, the the it absolutely works I promise you it works I, I have never seen anything that works so beautifully and sometimes the result is even far beyond what I hope for. Sometimes you just always hope just for a little bit of peace. Uh, but it goes far beyond that. Uh, I preached this and a man heard the tape. His wife, it was to a ladies meeting and he took the tape home. And uh, he came up to me later. He said, Sister Freeman, he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I got this job working for this man. And he had the Holy Ghost himself. He said, and I thought I was going to enjoy working there. Instead, he made me the butt of every joke. He said there was no respect. No one showed me any respect. And he treated me so ugly and he was downright sneaky. And I thought, all right, I'm going to put that blessing business to the test. He said I had to work late one night and I went and stood behind his desk in his office, stood right behind that chair. I said, God bless this man when he sits at this desk. Bless him with a sweet spirit. Uh, bless him with uh, uh, some nice uh, ways that he doesn't have. Uh, and I stood there and I blessed him and I felt so good about it I went to everybody's office and I blessed everybody he said I want you to know he said within three days everything changed I've had two raises uh, and everybody treats me so nice uh, and the people there all respect me and uh, treat me so decently he said if anybody asks you about blessing you tell them it absolutely works but I think the one that thrilled me the most was this lady that works for a psychiatric hospital and there was a new ruling made and she said she went to those in authority she said I cannot do this she said not only is this not right I am a child of God and I cannot do something that I feel I cannot follow a course of action that I feel is wrong and, and I, it, it, it is not right and I cannot do it they said all right then you will lose your job if you will either do it or lose your job. You're a good worker and we don't want to lose you, but if you do not do this, you will lose your job. So she was just waiting for the ax to fall. Then she thought, well, I'm not completely helpless in this. There's something I can do. And every time she'd walk past those offices where the decisions were made, she said, God bless those men. Uh, they, they don't know anything about you, but they need to bless them with salvation, bless them with understanding, uh, bless them with what's right and wrong, help them to understand what's right and wrong. And she said, I did this for about three weeks and waiting all all the time for them to call me in and tell me that was my last day uh, and they called me in and they said you know because you did not think this should be done we began to reconsider and we have changed this ruling <laughs> we do not want to lose you uh, and she said the whole hospital is a better place she said it's even had a good effect on all the patients <laughs> she said when I get a patient that's real wild <laughs> said I bless them <laughs> and I, I've never found anything that'll calm them down like blessing and it's been here in the word all along 
I, I only wish I had, when I think back, some of the things that has happened to us, the things we've gone through, I thought, oh, I wish I had known how to bless. Now, now I haven't really had the experience of this, but uh, at, the, at another retreat, where, and I believe this one is Alabama, where I, I mentioned this, uh, there was uh, this group of ladies that come in a van, and they said it wasn't running good when they came, and, and it refused to start when the meeting was over, and here's nine of them. They gotta get home, and this van is it, and we're right out at a camp way out and they're going to have to pay for a mechanic to come out from town uh, but there was a fellow there said come up from the office he said look uh, there is a man who knows something about cars I've sent uh, one of my children to call him he's not too far away and one of the girls said all right sister Freeman said blessing works why don't we just all join hands around this van and bless it and she said, we blessed that van good. And then the driver got in, turned the key, and it started, and we were on our way. They were gone when the man got there uh, to take a look at the van. Uh, I, now, I haven't tried that myself, uh, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. You see, the, the, you, you read back there in Deuteronomy, it says, Blessed shall be your store, your house, your field, your land, your animals. Everything will be blessed if you obey God and do what He wants you to do. We, are, we have been blind to a great pertinent fact that's in the Word of God that He wants us to bless others. And when the Lord spoke to me to come here, I said, Lord, haven't I preached blessing there already? And then He said, you're to go to Kilgore's and preach blessing. I said, all right, Lord, if I've preached it before, I'll preach it again. Somebody there needs it. But you've got to understand God wants us to be a blessing in this world. He's not anxious to let judgment fall on the world. He is not anxious to destroy the sinner and the unrighteous. He, he's long suffering. It's his will that they all be saved and that they all come to a knowledge of the truth and we can help by blessing. And you see another thing this does, it removes from us that self-righteous attitude that sometimes we exude. When you start blessing, and I'll tell you something else. There was a preacher that really upset me, and I don't get upset very often. <laughs> I have a, since God got through with me, he, he let me have a pretty even disposition, but I was upset with a preacher. He was doing some things that I didn't like, and he's writing some letters that, that made me feel bad. And all of a sudden, I realized I resent this. Now, no, there's no place for me to have resentment in my heart and walk with God. I've got to get the victory over this, and I kept praying. And then finally, one day, I said, to my husband well hey let's bless him we haven't blessed him yet he didn't curse me but he's uh, uh, sowing discord among brothers and brother Freeman and I joined hands and blessed that man and I haven't seen another letter I don't know if that's what stopped him or not but I know one thing that blessing works. <laughs> we have tried it on all kind of circumstance, <laughs> all kind of uh, situations, and it's been tremendous the way that blessing has worked. And God has called us to be a blessing. Now, there's many more scriptures that I could read, uh, but I want to get on to that. Now, that first chord of blessing, you remember, you bless Jesus. The second one, you bless others. And the third one, you bless yourself. Somebody said, I'd feel so self-conscious to say, bless me. Uh, let me quote Brother Freeman's favorite scripture since he couldn't be here with me tonight. He had a previous appointment, but he loves the scripture. It's Ephesians 3, verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now that sounds like an invitation to miracles, doesn't it? And I believe that's what it is. And there's only one qualifier. The rest of the verse says, according to the power that worketh in us. You see, us is going to have to be blessed <laughs> so that us can claim all this that God wants to do. I mean, he has said all we can ask or think, exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. But it all stops right there because us has a problem. So us needs to be blessed. And let me tell you another reason you need to bless yourself. You are the temple of God. 
It puts a different feeling on it when you say, bless this temple of yours, Lord. <laughs> well, the thing that woke me up to this, there was a lady in the hospital, and her legs were very, very bad. I mean, they were terrible. They'd had, she'd had three surgeries, and they were there trying to decide, will another surgery help or not? And the, she called for a preacher to come and pray for her, and he prayed for her, but then he said to her, have you ever blessed your legs? She said, well, they give me so much trouble, I wouldn't think about blessing them. He said, they've carried you around for 65 years. You ought to start blessing those legs. She started blessing her legs and walked out of the hospital three days later. Well, wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I have blessed away sore throat and flu. And you start blessing, it does something. It does something. And, uh, and, you know, we have this little thing that we uh, complain about the way we look, the color of our hair, our nose is too long. Me, I always grumbled about my feet, terrible feet, awful size, can't find shoes to fit them. I wear a ten and a half, five a toe, seven a heel. When I go in and ask for that size, they always say, huh? <laughs> because they, they just don't have it. And one day I woke up and realized I am making a bad mistake, always grumbling about my feet. I've complained about them all of my life. And I said, Lord, if you'll just forgive me. And I'm sorry it's taken me this long. And I started blessing my feet. And it was just a short time after that. Now, this was two years ago. A short, I'm sorry to admit that it took me that long to realize I should bless my feet instead of grumbling and complaining about them. Uh, but uh, I, Brother Freeman, we were at a camp meeting, and he said, you know, there's a shoe store over here, and I noticed that they have a sale. Uh, he said, let's go see if we can find you a pair of shoes. He's driven miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles in this city and every city we ever go to trying to find shoes for me. You said, I don't have any choice of style or color. I went in this day and I said to that young man, now please don't bring me 10 quads. I've bought a bunch of them. I can just wear them a little while and my feet are uncomfortable. I've got to have a 10 and a half. And I told him, he said, certainly, madam. And I thought, my goodness, he's just not going to bring out what I, you know, I don't tell him what he'll come out here with. He'd come back with his arm loaded down with boxes and I'd never seen that before. I know it's happened to a lot of other ladies, but it never happened to me before. And I put on the first pair, and I said, it fits. And he said, uh, she'll take it. Uh, and I put on the next pair, and I said, this is my size, too. And, well, he bought me 12 pairs of shoes. <laughs> If I if it had been left up to me, I'd probably stopped at four. He said, listen, I'm tired of driving and driving and trying to find addresses and trying to find shoes. He said, and then besides, they're half of half price today. <laughs> so, he, so he stopped me. Probably I've got enough shoes, except maybe some everyday shoes to last me the rest of my life uh, or until Jesus comes. <laughs> uh, but you see, nothing happened like that until I stopped finding fault with the way God had made my feet. Would you put your hand on your heart, please? I want you to repeat after me and say, I am an original. You are, you know. You are an original. Nobody else has the same fingerprint you've got. And they have discovered now that nobody out of four billion plus people in the world, there's no two has the same eye structure. They can identify you by your eyes. Every one of us are completely different, and you are a handiwork of God. I admit there's some things we can do to ourselves that's not good. But God has made you as you are. And that's this what he's going to work through. This is the temple that he lives in. It is us that's going to reach out to save our world. It's through us the revival will come. And so we need to be blessed and you need to bless yourself. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you a wonderful secret tonight. It, it is so tremendous. A lady wrote me from Africa. Well, I was in Africa. She was in America. She said, Sister Freeman, you see me next time, I'll be wearing a wig. My hair's all falling out. And I didn't really think about it, but I just wrote back and I said, every morning put your hands on your head and bless your head. Bless your hair. I came back two years later or more and saw her and I said, is that your wig you've got on? She said, no, it worked. 
I blessed it and it grew. Look at it. <laughs> she had a beautiful head of hair. <laughs> I'm just waiting for some brother to come and tell me he blessed his and it grew. I, I've got several testimonies from the ladies, but I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't work. I really don't. But I have, I, I'm, I'm honest with you. I haven't had a testimony about it yet. But I do want you to know God wants you to be blessed. And he will be happy for you to bless yourself. And here's something else, and this is very critical. Here between your ears is the most wonderful piece of machinery that God has ever made. And no man has ever equaled it. Here between your ears is a wonderful mind that God... But you know what the, what the, the trend of the day is, you know? They write these poems that talk about, you know, I, my bifocals help me to see, and these store-bought teas I can keep on chewing, but the last line is, I sure do miss my mind. Uh, people make such a, 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 a to-do uh, and call themselves dummy. Uh, uh, wait a minute. You need to bless that mind. Now, let me tell you something that you probably do not know. In 1964, a blood clot went through my heart, and I was so long without oxygen to my brain that it, it wiped out my memory. We had built and brought in a, a new church and had a lot of people. I could not remember anybody's name. I wasn't even sure if I knew them. My memory was wiped out. And one day I realized that I can bless this mind and I began to bless it and I am amazed at what God has done as I bless my mind. And I have seen so many people that this is a great, a great worry to them. I'm afraid something's going to happen to my mind. If you bless it, Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> this may not be so deep and so profound, but I will tell you something. It will change your life. Yes. And it will change what you're able to do for others when you begin to bless first Jesus, then others, and then yourself. Amen. Don't leave yourself out. Now, I don't like the word self-esteem, but we do need self-respect. And you know what the doctors and the learned people say about us in America? We have more things than anybody in the world, but we have the lowest self-image. And that is so sad for children of God that he is redeemed by his blood. And I used to be one of them. But when I realized that I am special to him, and you are special to him, every one of you, you are special to him, don't complain anymore about who you are and what you are and the way you look. God made you the way he wants you to be. And you start blessing what he has made. You bless his handiwork. You bless the temple of God. And you bless that mind. You know the scientists tell us that uh, they used to say we only use 10% of our mind. But now they say it's 1%. Less than 1% many times. You see, we have our whole life through, we have avoided trying to use it. We just want everything just to happen, but we don't make ourselves use what God has given us. And this scientist, I, I wish I had written down his name. I read the book, and this is what he said about our minds. He said, the, if you consider the greatest computer that's ever been made, the most sophisticated one and compare it to your mind he said let me tell you how many times better your mind is than the best computer and I saw a little thing in a reader's digest a note was a time magazine that said that they have a chip now the size of a lady's thumbnail that will hold a whole encyclopedia Britannica I don't understand that I thank God for computers and I use one uh, but I sure don't understand it but he said let me tell you how much better your mind is than any of those computers he said 10 to the 57th power. Now I hadn't the faintest idea what that meant, but my husband explained it to me. You put down 10 and then you put 57 zeros. My goodness. 
That's how many times better that mind is that God has given you. And I felt such an urgent need to tell you, start blessing your mind. Young people, you're having problem learning some of the things you need to learn. Bless your mind. Mothers and fathers, uh, grandpas and grandmas, uh, I fall in that category, both of them. Uh, you start blessing what God has already put there. This man also said that inside your brain are little electrical circuits that if they were uncoiled, they would reach from here to the moon and back. It is awesome what God has put in our head and it needs some blessing because we don't have to. You see, this is the cause of so many mood swings, you know, up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. You can level off when you start blessing your mind and start blessing yourself. You see, God wants to do so much more for us than we're seeing happening. I, I, I sometimes ache, I hurt, because I realize we're begging God, asking everybody to help us pray, and He is ready all the time to do it. He wants us just to believe Him, and you believe with your mind. You don't believe with your soul, you believe with your mind. Hallelujah. And if we can be blessed enough that we can claim the promises of God, there is no limit to what God will do if we will just begin to praise Him and worship Him and bless what He has done for us. Someone put something in my hand and I want to read it to you. It's called the apostolic attitude. I want you to listen to this. I'm a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Ghost power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of his. I won't look back. Let up, slow down, back away, or be still. <laughs> my past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. <laughs> I'm finished with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame division, chintzy giving, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by present tense, by faith, walk by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. Hallelujah. My faith is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions few. My guide reliable. And my mission clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, deceived, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of my enemy, negotiate at the table of the adversary, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, let up, or shut up until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and preached up for the cause of Christ. Uh, that sends cold chills down my spine because this says just exactly the way I feel about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go till he comes. Give till I drop. Preach till all know. Work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will not have any trouble recognizing me because I will not be discouraged and I refuse to quit. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is what I desire for you, that God will put you in this kind of a condition, blessed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, I thank you, my God. 
I thank you, my God. I thank you, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, la la ba ko sanda la ba. Uriya sanda la ba ho kya siata. I want to read you a scripture in Isaiah 65 about blessing ourselves. 65 and 16, I'm reading the first part of the verse. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And we know the God of truth. And I didn't know that was in there either, Brother Kilgore. He who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. Turn over just a few pages to Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 2 and it says and thou shalt swear. Now this does not mean blasphemy. This means declare. You, you, thou shalt declare. The Lord liveth in truth in judgment and in righteousness and the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him shall they glory. God wants us to bless him, bless Jesus, bless others, bless yourself, bless Jesus J, bless others O, bless yourself Y. It spells joy. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And as I was praying, I felt so impressed. I want to bless you tonight. I'm going to first bless the ladies. If every lady here will please stand. I want to bless you. The Lord gave me this passage of scripture because it answers the needs of women today in this world we're living in. And as I was reading it one night about the, mentioned the part about the son, a lady was healed of lupus. You know what God's going to do in these last days? The focus has always been on come up here at the front, we'll pray for you. I believe we're going to see it like we saw it in Africa. While the word goes out, people are going to be healed. And while the word goes out, people are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's going to be a mass thing. God's going to do great things in this day. He's getting us ready for a wonderful day. And ladies, I want you to be blessed. Would you listen, please? I bless you with this. The Lord is thy keeper. I'm reading Psalms 121, verses 5 through 8. Uh, but don't look it up now. Look it up later. <laughs> Psalms 121. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Our land is full of evil. But God will preserve you, my sisters, from all evil. Hallelujah. <laughs> he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. I bless you with the preservation from the hand of God. Hallelujah. And you are blessed. This is valid. And you will feel it. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> God is reaching down with his mighty hand and touching each one of my sisters right now with something special. You're going to feel it tomorrow. You're going to say, why do I feel so good? Because you've been blessed. That's why you're going to feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You ladies may be seated, and I'll ask all the brothers to stand. I want to bless you, brothers, with the ancient blessing that Aaron was instructed to bless the men of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and and 25 and 26 the Lord bless thee and keep thee <laughs> hallelujah the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace so I bless you my brothers and you are blessed <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah 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 <laughs> 
Oh, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power of your blessings that we are able to transmit one to another. Hallelujah. You may be seated. There's just a few more things I want to say, and I'm concluding. But you see, uh, that wonderful prophecy that goes all the way back to Abraham, a man that God sent out to travel where he didn't know that he was going. He didn't have a road map. He went out by faith. Uh, and it was saying there, the promise was made to him over and over, in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And Paul lets us know that this is the Holy Ghost. And so we have been blessed with the blessing of Abraham that has been handed down uh, through this word by the beautiful plan of God. We are blessed and enjoying tonight the blessing of Abraham. And God wants to use each one of his children and put such a blessing in them that they will be able to bless everyone that they come in contact with when you walk in a house they should feel a different atmosphere because you are blessed when you walk down the street you walk by people they should feel different because the power of God is with you and God wants to use us to bless this world oh God help us to be a blessing and to bless others in your name Let's just close our eyes and meditate in the presence of the Lord for a moment. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank the Lord. Praise our God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord wants the one who gave that message to give the interpretation. Jesus. Hallelujah. What a beautiful admonition. Let's just reach out to love the Lord. Praise our God. Praise our God. Praise our God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless your people, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Thank you for your love. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the praises rise in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, some of you are not turning loose. Glory to God. Bless the Lord who reigns and wills. Don't be afraid. God's, God's wanting to pour out a blessing on somebody. The Lord who reigns my life with so much love. He can. Bless you, 
Oh, 